Good morning, everybody. I'm going to wait for a bunch of people to hop on. There's quite a few that are going to be jumping on our call today. Wow, so many of you. How's everybody doing? Good. Hi. Oh, yes, yes. All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sorry, I am tired. <laughs> if you can't tell. <laughs> um, so today, I, I, so the reason why I wanted to do this, there was quite a, a few of you guys who have mentioned in the past that you have considered relocating or you want to relocate or you just wanna, maybe you're curious on just how I did it and how I relocated. Um, and built my business from the ground up again in one year, basically. And so I just wanted to share some insight with you all um, and just kind of some of the things that I did that maybe could be helpful for you since I've already walked this path. Um, so I want this to kind of be informal. I'm gonna do a little slide, slideshow presentation for you guys. That way you have my resources, literally everything I did step-by-step but if you have questions, like literally just let's just chat. I want to make this a conversation hey. like a bunch of friends and whatnot. Um, because that's how I see all you. All my all my um Facebook friends and Instagram friends. Sorry, let me make sure my phone's on mute before we get started. Oh. oh yeah it's been about eight weeks oh, wow. but I'm having lots of issues with it so I'm sorry somebody's talking in the background all right we're gonna get started um as you guys know so I've been in real estate um, well just about 11 years now uh, first nine years of that was in California and I didn't want to stay there I just wasn't happy that's where I kind of grew up and I always wanted to be in the Raleigh area um I visited Raleigh 13 years ago, maybe almost 14 years ago now, for the first time and fell in love. And at the time, my husband and I were just dating. And I said, you know what? If we end up getting married and having kids, that's where I want to raise my family. Like, I really want to be there. And he was like, perfect. So do I. So um, his sister at the time actually had lived here um, in Apex, where in California. I am from um, Hanford, California, Lamar, California, which is about 45 minutes south of Fresno. I went to Fresno State and got my degree in interior design, went right into uh, real estate, and that's part of my story. I went right into real estate. My first year, I ended up selling 32 houses. I think part of that was because the market had just crashed, and everyone was, you know, looking at getting a deal, and I was working with a lot of first-time homebuyers, because at the time, that's that was my demographic. That was my age demographic. I was working with a lot of first-time homebuyers. Um, and so I hit the ground running, sold 32 houses my first year, and the dream of moving to Raleigh just kind of faded away because, you know, how do you pick up a move right after the market crashed when you're, when you're successful? And I thought, you know what, it's kind of too risky. And we had just gotten married. We just finished college, just gotten married, and I started into real estate. And um, I just kind of always wanted to make it a goal to get here. Well, I ended up getting my husband retired out of the corporate world at that time. This was like five, six years ago. He joined me full-time in real estate. We built up our home staging company. We built up our real estate team. We had a retail design storefront. And all in this time, I ended up having, two, we had two children. So um, by the time my second child came around, I was like many of you, I would wear her in the baby carrier. I would go on appointments with her. I would stage a house by wearing her. And it just was so stressful running basically three small businesses while having a toddler and a newborn. And I thought, you know what, something has to give. So we um, closed up our shop, which was really, really sad for me because that was like always also a little part of my dream is having my own retail storefront and doing design and all of that good stuff. And um, 
it it was hard because I I felt like I almost felt like a failure you guys I felt like my dream just wasn't happening the way I had it planned lo and behold God had this entire plan for us from the very beginning so it's really cool to look back and kind of see because when I went into real estate I thought man I wasted my time and money uh, got into student loan debt to go to school for interior design. I'm not even using my degree. Fast forward a few years and I started doing all that design work, which was really cool. So there's always a plan and a purpose in your life. So I just want to encourage some of you, if you're feeling distracted or feeling like you just don't know which way to go, just know that there you guys are here for a reason. And I just want to share that with you because I, I've been in your shoes and I've been discouraged very much so actually. Anyway, so we shut, shut down our shop and felt kind of like a sigh of relief. Now I could focus on just the staging and the real estate team and maybe being a mom. I was that crazy mom that in between contractions, you know, so many of us dealing with clients and writing offers and lost a couple of clients because my husband refused to go show him a house while I was in labor. True story. It's okay. We didn't need him anyways, right? And um, through that, I realized you don't get your time back, especially when your children are little. And so I said, you know what? I need to close the shop, close the shop. During that week, we realized our dream again of going to Raleigh. And at that point, we were a little bit more established, obviously. And so it was kind of like we had this mini little empire in our small local town. And it, it was kind of crazy to even think about letting it go and relocating. And we thought about it and prayed over it for that week lo and behold by the end of the week we both kept getting the same answer like now is the time now is the time like our son was going to be starting kindergarten the following year so this was about june of 2018 when we said you know what we're not getting any younger why are we putting our dreams on hold we're not trees i hear that all the time right you're not a tree you can pick up and move and relocate if you want and start over um in which we said you know what why not what the heck so I moved forward and I ended up getting um, my real estate license here in North Carolina, by the way, before I even relocated here um, because it is reciprocal. Um, North Carolina reciprocates a lot of other states licenses if you've been licensed full time for at least three years. So I thought, perfect. So I got my license. And so that was about October of 2018. And then I came out here and basically figured out where we wanted to move and we planned our move we were really quiet about it really hush hush because I didn't want it to really make um, our business crumble a lot faster than we had planned on getting out of town if that makes sense I wanted to make sure we still had some sales in the pipeline as we relocated um, and moving up to our relocation move so we announced our move finally about a month before we moved it was basically when we put our house on the market and people were like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like you cannot be moving. And lo and behold, we ended up relocating and completely started over again. My husband ended up going back into the corporate world, which was kind of his thing too. He wanted to do that because he always felt like real estate was my thing and he wanted to do his own thing. And which was fine because he had just finished up his MBA like the year previous. So he's like, you know what? I'm totally marketable. I could completely find a job. Um, and so that's what he ended up doing. But it took him about six months to find the perfect fit and the perfect job for him here when we relocated. And during that time, after we relocated, I'm sharing all my story, by the way, just so you guys know what path I walked, because I feel like so many of you are in that same situation and you're considering relocating and don't know what you want to do. But I'm sharing this because it's all a part of my story. And I want, obviously, I'm going to do a slideshow presentation here shortly to share share these resources with you guys and just kind of what I learned through my transitional phase. Um, but when I moved here, I thought, you know what, I'm going to take the first six months. I'm not even going to work. I'm going to spend time with my kids because I've never had that opportunity before to like just spend time with them. And you want to go to the pool? Great. Let's go to the pool. You want to go get um, a smoothie? Let's go get a smoothie. Whatever it is that they wanted to do, I wanted to be there for them to be able to take that um, time and just really get to know like our new area and find out new fun things to do and restaurants to go eat at and playgrounds to go play at and just really find out more about my new community because how am I supposed to sell if I don't know where anything is so that's my first tip number one obviously um, and so I took about six months just to kind of figure things out I didn't dive right into real estate um, and that was the best sweetest summer of my life honestly is spending that with my family with my kids and getting to know where we were, we, where we had just relocated to and 
it was a really um, cool experience because I don't know when I'll ever get that opportunity again, because now it's like, you know, your, your pipeline just fills up and you can't slow down. So it was a really sweet um, time for me to be able to have that and be able to really bring value to the table uh, when working with clients that were relocating here. Cause I just felt like if I'm going to sell my area, I need to know my area. And the only way to know my area is to go around and drive it and figure out all the different spots and, and all that good stuff. So that's kind of my story. Um, but after that, so that brought me to right around December of 2019. Um, I was at a small local firm all this time. And I just, I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't find any value there. Um, there just wasn't any value, right? It was like one of those um, 90, 10 brokerages and I just didn't find much value. And then I finally found EXP. I joined EXP January of 2020. And that that whole first year of me being um, here in the Raleigh market, I sold 11.4 million in real estate. And I'll tell you guys, when I wrote down my goals, I seriously laughed at myself. I was like, this is such a freaking pipe dream. There's no way I'm ever, ever, ever going to be able to sell this much. But if I want to support my babies and relocate and, you know, we have these big dreams and these big goals. And I looked at my dream board. I realized that I just had to go for it. I had to get out of my comfort zone and I had to get out there and I had to network and I had to make it happen. So that's my backstory. Thank you for listening to it. Without further ado, I'm going to share my screen now with you guys. And I'm just going to um, go over some of the things that I did that helped me build my business in a brand new market. And hopefully some of you that are considering relocating, hopefully this helps you too. And again, um, please don't hesitate to like stop me and ask questions because I now have my screen share so I cannot see the comments anymore. Um, so just make sure that you just chime in if you have a question or you have a comment. All right, um, let me do this in presentation mode. Whoops, hold on a second. In case you guys didn't know that, you can do presentations in um, Canva, by the way. All right, this is um, how to build your business in a new market. All right. You guys see my screen okay? Give me a thumbs up. We good? All right, perfect. So before I dive into this, um, I want you all to know one thing. There is no secret sauce. My secret sauce is called hard work. <laughs> I think a lot of people um, look to industry leaders and look to people who've done what they want to do because they think, oh, maybe they know something I don't. I mean, maybe there's some tips and tricks along the way, but my biggest thing is there's no secret sauce. There's no magic pill. What it all comes down to is hard work. Um, when I, there's a lot of people that reach out to me that are like, oh, I want to get into real estate. You make it look so easy. How many of you heard that? <laughs> you make it look so easy. Um, maybe that's my fault because I make it look like I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know. But, um, there was a lot of hard work that has gone into building a, a brand and building a business for the second time around. I think it was harder the second time around than it was the first time around for two reasons. When I did it the first time, I was a newlywed. I had no children. I could work 16 hours a day and not even blink. And it like, that was my day. Here, when relocating here, it's like, okay, now I have the kids sports. I have to take them to school. I have to pick them up. You know, all their after school activities. Cause my son, he's in golf. My son's in baseball. He's in soccer. He's in basketball. He's a little athlete. He has things that he needs me there for. My daughter, same thing. She's now at the age where she's getting into dance. She's getting into gymnastics and tumbling. So I say all this to say, if you're a mama like me, don't ever make yourself feel like you're not good enough that you can't do both because you can, because I'm doing it, I'm living it, and you can do it too. Don't ever let anyone make you feel like because you're a mom that you can't be a good agent too, because I happen to think we are the best agents. Um, we know how to juggle many things at once, but there's a lot of hard work in my schedule, the way it looks. Um, I get up 6.30, um, do what I need to do in the mornings and get my kids up by 7 15 get them ready fed out the door to school or on the computer since this year was online learning um take my daughter to daycare get back by 9 a.m i'm working i work from like nine to three do the school pickups get them to all their after school activities get dinner on the table bath bedtime and they're in bed by 7 30 um so i'm working from like 8 p.m until 11 or midnight a lot of nights yes <laughs> I go to bed late. I get up early. Um, I knew that if I was going to make this happen, I had to have that type of determination. And there was nobody that was going to get in the way of 
my goals and my family. And basically my whole, my whole big why is my children and building generational wealth. So I, I had to be very determined to get my business up off the ground in my first year. There was no way I was going to fail. And that's the biggest thing you guys is mentality that if you have a positive mindset, it'll take you very, very far. You have to eliminate all of those limiting beliefs and know that you can do it and be determined to do it. Um, don't let anything get in your way. Also getting uncomfortable. That means meeting with people, going to networking events, even if that means it's on Zoom like we are right now, um, and just getting outside of your comfort zone and realizing that through, in order to get through something and really grow, true growth happens when you get uncomfortable. I fully believe that, I've always believed that. And um, it may look like I'm always comfortable, but I'm not always. Um, I'm probably one of the biggest people that I'm like an extrovert introvert. I don't, who likes really going to networking events? Not very many people, um, but I did it anyways because I knew I had to meet the movers and shakers in my new community and rub elbows with people that I really wanted to meet. And then lastly, I kind of already touched on this. I wanted to focus on my big why and that's what really helped me um, get to where I needed to go this year and make sure that my babies, their dreams and what they want would always happen because mama made it happen. And so they always know that if they want anything at all in this life, that they have to work hard for it, um, that things don't just happen. You do have to work hard for it. And I want to continue showing them that through hard work, anything can happen. So um, step number one, when relocating, the biggest thing is make sure if you have some type of area that you want to consider relocating to really do some research figure out if it's going to fit your lifestyle and then the next step is if you're like okay i really honed in on an area that i want to uh, relocate to then from there check and see on their um website on the state board if their state is reciprocal to what license you already have so north carolina is reciprocal to all states as long as you've been fully licensed for at least three years in your prior state. And um, all I had to do was either take the state portion of the test or they were gonna give me what's called a provisional broker's license. And all I had to do was complete um, three post license courses. And so I chose that route. That way I was a provisional broker right away. I had my license. I could start selling as soon as I wanted to. So that's, you know, look into that and look at your state, um, the state that you're considering relocating to and figure out if they will reciprocate your current license. Once you're licensed, make sure you um, hang your license with a firm that can really help you dive into building a no local network, meeting vendors, and just kind of um, implanting yourself in that new community. Because like I said, I was at a small brokerage and you would think that it was going to be a good fit for me but it absolutely was not it was a total hands off like it was the worst experience i've had to be honest with you um if i'm being really honest and you would think that because i'm at a national brokerage now that i wasn't going to get that support and it couldn't be farther from the truth so i'm so happy that i made that decision to switch to exp because i really was able to help uh really rebuild that network and vendors and all that good stuff and then once you relocate, spend time driving around, getting to know what's here. I kind of touched on that already. The first six months that I moved here, I didn't start selling at all. Um, what I did is I spent time with my family, drove around, got to know like different neighborhoods, all that good stuff, because I knew that if I was gonna be selling in my market, I wanted to know my market. I wanted to know what neighborhoods were the hot neighborhoods, where people were moving to, what neighborhoods offered what um, commun like amenities, like the pools and all that good stuff. And then the other tip I had, and this is something that you guys all should be doing, is follow other realtors in your new market that you want to move to on social media. Find out who those top producers are and follow them, because chances are they're going to have listings in these hot neighborhoods, and then it'll tip you off on like, oh, okay, maybe I need to go check out 12 Oaks or whatever neighborhood it is. And I know many of you know that I live in 12 Oaks, so that's why I said that. But um, those top realtors are going to be the ones getting the listings, showing you different, you know, top restaurants and stuff like that as long as they're up on social media and doing what they need to do just mimic them like follow them and figure out what it is where they're sharing listings where they're getting their listings like whatever neighborhoods they're in and go and drive to those neighborhoods drive around it look at it on google maps figure out all of that stuff i've spent so much time doing this it's not even funny um like i said that's probably the only 
quote unquote work I did for the first six months was just figuring out my new my new area. I wanted to fall in love with it. And I sure did by doing just that and finding like different trail hikes to go on and the different lakes and all that fun stuff. So um, I can't stress this last piece enough. Now, some of you might go, well, Jamie, I don't have the opportunity to do that. Do you just have to, even if it's for the first two months, set aside time that you're really just going to figure out your new area because it's hard to sell if you don't know what you're selling is all I'm going to say. So take the time and do it. Um, my other piece of advice that piggies, piggybacks on all of this is make sure you have at least six months of income saved up before you relocate. We sold our house. We had um, some good equity in our home. My husband didn't get a job for six months. So we were basically living off our savings and our equity on our house. Was it scary as shit? Heck yes, it was. Um, but I knew that in order to get past that and start selling, I had to get uncomfortable and get past that fear. That's the biggest thing. So get those limiting beliefs out of there. All right. So that's my biggest tips for when, once you do start going through that process of relocating, these are what, these are the things you need to do to get there. And then next, um, it was around the end of October. Cause I think it was right around Halloween of 2019 that I took what's called the Zillow killer, um, online bootcamp. It's called zero Zillow killer bootcamp write this down and or if you guys want this presentation when I'm done, I'm happy to send this to you. That way you don't have to make a ton of notes. Um, but Zillow Killer, he has a boot camp. His name is James Rembert. You can see right here. And he's awesome. He really helped me find my voice. What Zillow Killer boot camp basically it's becoming omnipresent, creating a digital footprint um, while building your brand and having the ability to target market people on Facebook and retarget them and creating custom audiences. Um, anyone who's viewed your videos for at least three seconds, you can retarget them with new videos and basically walk them through this, uh, the sales funnel process, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't even know this thing existed, but it's pretty cool to be able to have that ability to really target people. I know so many of you are like, how did they do that? But make sure you take this course if you want to consider upping your game and really learning the ins and outs um, of Facebook marketing and online advertising. But really, I think the biggest thing that I learned about the Zillow Killer Bootcamp was to do the damn videos. <laughs> do the videos, you guys. Like so many of us struggle with doing the videos. You just have to do them. It, it helped me find my voice. It helped me find my confidence again and realize that even through relocating, that I could still be me, do the videos and find my confidence and speak to a crowd that it didn't matter that I just relocated here because guess what? They know less than I did, right? They're relocating here. They're looking at me at the expert and I just went through a relocation move. I think it's important to share that. Like, hey, I just went through this. I know what neighborhoods are what. I did a ton of research. Because I just went through this, I can also help you. And don't shy away from that. Like. You guys have heard me talk about this all the time. Like, oh yeah, I just relocated here. Did I don't think I lost a single client by telling them that I just relocated. In fact, if anything, it really helped prove that maybe I was the right fit for them because I was sharing my life. I was doing the videos um, because your vibe is always going to attract your tribe. That if you are the most authentic version of yourself, they are going to reach out because they see you as like kind they're like oh I like that chick like she's a mom she's into leopard print like me she likes all the things I do um she's sharing some really cool videos and content of like this area that I'm considering moving to wow she really seems like she knows what she's talking about I don't even care if she just moved there I really like her I want to work with her boom done so really it's about becoming your digital mayor and if you want to learn more about that you're going to want to take this like I said, um, it really just helped me find my voice and give me the confidence to do the videos and really helped me learn the ins and outs of Facebook advertising. Does anyone have any questions? If so, chime in. All right, no questions. I actually have one question. Do yes. you do your videos mostly on Instagram or Facebook? I do both. I do, do both. both. Yep. Okay. Um, I'll do IGTV. I do, um, I don't do a ton of reels. I've done a few. I've done like four or five maybe reels, but mostly what I do is in my stories. I like to get in mm -hmm. my stories because what happens is they, they land on your Instagram page and there's a part here where I'm going to talk about Instagram in a bit, but they land on your Instagram page 
and it's great to have a nice pretty feed, but you have to be branded. You have to show content that they care about. Then they're going to hit the follow button. Then what happens is once they're following you for a while, they're going to start looking at your stories. And that's where they really get to know your personality is through the stories, sharing my life, sharing me going to the grocery store, you know, taking my kids wherever they need to go, making dinner, like just being me. That's where the real magic happens is in the stories. And so I do a lot of that. Um, I've done some videos where it's like new construction communities. It just depends, but I've done it all. Um, But stories is really where it's at if you're looking to build a following on Instagram and convert those followers to buyers. Because that's where a lot of my buyers came from this year. Um, In fact, all of these resources I'm going to share with you are how I've gotten clients this, this year. But um, yeah, to answer your question, I've done videos everywhere. But stories is truly where it's at. And then just creating like really cool promo videos, um, listing videos, just being different. Think outside the box. Uh, For fast traction, you'll probably just want to consider calling Fizbo's, drop off packets to them, follow up with them, do the same thing with expired listings if you're wanting to get something in the pipeline ASAP. Get involved in your local networking groups and local chamber of commerce. I can't stress this enough. Oh, someone was talking. What was that? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I thought there was a question. Um, Get involved in your local networking groups. Even through COVID, there's still networking groups going on. Um, You just have to find them through the research. For me, I found like a couple local ones here in my small community, a couple bigger ones in Raleigh, because I live about 15, 20 minutes outside Raleigh. And then also your chamber of commerce, because then you'll get to go to the ribbon cutting events, because even through COVID, my community is still having ribbon cutting events. You'll get to meet like the business owners of your new community. And so I think it's really important, no matter where you go, you need to make sure that you're getting plugged in immediately. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Nobody likes doing it, but you have to do it if you really want to get your name out there and really start to meet people. Um, So that's what I did the first six months. I drove around. I did one-on-one coffee dates with people and I did the networking events. Um, And at the end of every single coffee appointment, what I would ask them is, who do you know that I should know, especially anyone directly uh, related to the real estate industry? It could be like a plumber, it could be a home inspector, it could be a lender, you know, whatever it is, if they're a photographer, if you know anyone that's related to the real estate industry, I'd love to meet them. And for me, it was more about just meeting them and letting them tell their story because when you let someone tell their story I feel like you listen to them they're going to be more connected to you and feel like wow that person is awesome I really like them but really it's just because you let them talk the whole time (laughs) so let them do most of the talking that's fine share your story and say hey I know that I'm new to the area but I'm just not new to real estate so I want you to know I have experience I'm just building my brand here in a new community um I will love the opportunity to connect with anybody that you might know that's, you know, in the real estate industry. And that honestly was a huge piece of my puzzle because then I started to meet local lenders. And when you start to meet local lenders, you tell them, hey, I'm not new to real estate. I'm just new here. I would love the opportunity to work with any buyer leads that you have and earn your trust. That's when it happens. Um, I got a few, like maybe three or four um, buyers out of that this year that just by saying, hey, I would love to earn your trust. And now I have an awesome reciprocal business relationship with a couple of local lenders. So that's the biggest thing is um, going on these networking groups, meeting people to go on -on one-on-ones with, to meet them and get to know their story, asking them who do they know that you need to know, go to local trade shows to find out about who those local real estate vendors are. I know trade shows aren't happening really right now. They're gonna get back to happening. So um, don't write that off completely. I went to, I think it was called like a new construction, um, like trade show where all the new construction um, companies were there. And I just got to know who was building where, which was huge for me. So I got maps and like went driving around to all these new construction communities. I did videos at these new construction communities. I put them on my Facebook. I um, would do little Facebook ads and anyone who watched any of my videos for at least 10 seconds, I would retarget them with the next new construction ad video. Um, so pay for like video views. And again, you can learn all that if you go to the Zillow Killer Bootcamp. But um, this is content that you guys can use right away. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be a real estate expert to do a video of new construction and retarget these people and just keep putting new videos in front of them. And all of a sudden you become your digital mayor. 
I've shared this story with some of you before, but it was in, I hadn't even sold a house here yet. I think it was in January of last year. And I was at the grocery store checking out and the cashier was like, oh, no, it wasn't the cashier. It was the lady behind me. She was like, man, you look really familiar. Um, do I know you? Did you go to high school here? And I was like, nope, I just moved here. And she's like, oh, okay. And then the cashier goes, oh, I know how I know you. You're that realtor lady, aren't you? And to me, it just proved that doing the videos and putting your face out there, even if they don't remember your name or your brand, they're going to remember your face. And the more that you can retarget them with more new videos, even if they don't follow your page, you're just going to become omnipresent. You're going to be your digital mayor. You're going to be the person that they recognize and then the voice and the face that they recognize. So that was a huge, um, it was a huge triumphant moment for me that I knew I was headed down the right path and doing things the right way. So do the videos. Okay, and then um, join any online or Facebook network networking groups. So if you can't find any that are doing in person, at least try to find some that are doing them online. Does anybody have anything to say about any of this or any questions before I move on to the next slide? I do. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, with the videos, do you do them yourself or do you have a videographer that does them for you? I do them all myself, you guys. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to spend a ton of money. I started out just by using my um, iPhone. I got a gimbal like stabilizer for my iPhone so that it makes it like just buttery smooth. I got an external mic and I have all these links. If you guys want them, I'm happy to share what um, video equipment I started out with. And I just shot the videos myself. I used um, InShot, the InShot app on my iPhone to edit the videos quickly, put some text in there, add a little bit of music and then would upload them. So it was a lot quicker. I mean, they weren't super fancy videos, but at least it was a video. I think that's the biggest thing so many of us get hung up on is we want it to be professional grade quality and be so good that it like blows everyone away. But I'll be honest, they don't care. Really people want, um, they really want to see authenticity. Authenticity is always going to beat perfect looking videos. Sure, once you start doing like property promo videos for your listings and things like that, that's when you're gonna wanna start to invest in having a professional videographer do your stuff. But if you're just doing stuff like around your community and cool restaurants and new construction in that area, just use your iPhone, use your cell phone, whatever it is that you have and just shoot the videos because I promise you, no one's looking for perfection. That's kind of gone out the window. The more and more I see that and the more that videos are being done, people don't care. They want real and they want authentic. So that was a really good question, by the way. Um, let me just look at my notes here to make sure I'm on track. Okay, cool. Anybody else have any other questions before I move on? All right. Um, Instagram, so many of our favorite topic. Instagram is a huge, huge, huge tool that I utilized this year for all of my relocation clients. Um, I started this Instagram right after I moved here and built this many followers within a year, pretty much. Um, some of them are realtors, but a lot of them are also people that are relocating here or about to relocate here. And my biggest thing that I can tell you is make sure you're putting out content of value. What does that look like? What do you mean, Jamie? Well, I don't know. It depends on who you're trying to sell to. Are you trying to sell to first time home buyers? Are you trying to reach those relocation clients? Again, your vibe is always going to attract your tribe. Be you, brand yourself, share content in your new local market, but whatever I like, that's what I share. I share my favorite sushi restaurant, my favorite Italian restaurant, my favorite boutiques, my favorite places to go get coffee. All I'm doing, you guys, is sharing how I'm living my life. I'm sharing bits and pieces of what I do, where I go and do these things, and it's appealing to people because they're like, oh, I'm relocating there. I don't know anything. And when you're sharing something um, that they are interested in hearing about, all of a sudden, they're no longer going to continue searching for a realtor. They're just going to follow you. And what happens is I get these messages all the time. Okay, this is what happens. They'll start to follow you. If you use um, hyperlocal hashtags, what I mean by that is hashtag Raleigh Realtor, um, hashtag Holly Springs. Those are what I call hyperlocal hashtags because they're only searching those hashtags if they are trying to relocate here or hashtag relocate to Raleigh. 
So I've used so many different um, hyperlocal hashtags. Again, there's no secret sauce. It's just a lot of hard work and figuring out um, what worked for me and what was working was consistency and just continuing to put out that kind of content, branded content, mind you. So it'd be like a photo of me sitting outside my favorite coffee shop, um, a photo of me at my local boutique store shopping, you know, things like that. You can't just share a photo of these areas and expect to build your brand and build a following because they want to see your face at these places. They want to see you. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing. And just make sure you're sh sharing this content. And when you share this content, get hyper local, but brand these um, photos to you, tag those local places. So you know how you can pick a location. What I do is like, let's say, let's say I was going to my favorite boutique. I would tag that boutique, bless your heart in my post. And then what I do is I would share that post in my stories and then tag them in the stories too. So I'm not only tagging the location of the shop, in my um, feed, but then when I share them in my stories, I'm tagging them in my stories too, because then what happens is they love being called out. Then they'll share their stories in their stories. So now you're reaching a whole different um, market and people who aren't following you, and then they start to follow you. So that's kind of been the thing is like, you have to get super hyper local and share content that people care about and tag those local places and then share it in your stories. Cause then they'll, they'll continue to, um, share that stuff. But honestly, it all just comes back to branding. Be who you are because your vibe always attracts your tribe. And don't try to be something that you're not. If you're not the high nine inch high heel wearing perfect, you know, pantsuit realtor, then don't be that. Um, so many of you see that I wear jeans or sweaters or, you know, sometimes I wear dresses or whatever. I don't care. Like this picture right here of me on my birthday, I had just got done with my birthday Peloton ride. Um, I think Chloe's on this call. She did that ride with me. Thank you, Chloe. And I was like, so appreciative. I just shared my heart on like how I felt so loved because I've never in my life had this many amazing friends. And you know, what's crazy, you guys, so many of these amazing friends that I have now here in my local area are people that I helped buy houses and they turn into my best of friends because they're just attracted to who I am because I live the same lifestyle that they do. I'm into the same things that they're into. And they showed me so much love on my birthday. I honestly, like, I never felt so loved before. And I just wanted to show my appreciation and gratitude. But it all comes back to that is what's cool is so many of my clients end up becoming my friends. And it's just because I'm being who I am on social media. So stop trying to be something that you're not. And just do the videos. Take the photos of you at these places. Like, you don't even have to um, hire a brand photographer. Just get one of those little ring lights or a selfie stick and take photos of yourself. If you're on a super low budget, like I was when I first relocated here, that's what I did. And you just have to continue branding yourself because as you build your brand and show your face, that's what people care about the most. Um, I know so many of you are in Modern Agent or you're in Coffee and Contracts and we have this great content, but I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter. People don't care about stock photos. They care about your face. They care about your voice. They wanna see more of who you are that is why I say it's it's all about the stories. You have to get all up in your stories and share who you are. Like, yeah, they're going to follow you. And if your stuff isn't nice enough looking on your feed, they're not going to hit that follow button. But once they hit that follow button, as long as your feed looks you know decent enough and is attractive to them, they're going to hit that follow button. But what really makes them feel like you're the area expert and like they really don't want to work with anyone else is when you're in your stories. So that's the biggest thing I have to say is make sure you're doing the videos. I know so many of you have this wonderful content, a pretty feed, but if you're not showing your face, if you're not branding it to you, if you're not in your stories, people are just going to fall off your page and they're just going to stop engaging with your stuff. And yeah, they might hit that follow button, but if you're not putting enough content out there that's making them engage in your stuff, you're gonna mess up the algorithm to where they don't even see your stuff anymore to begin with. So that's the best way is just creating the um, different types of stories and, and making sure that you've got engagement from your followers. And so again, I get these messages all the time. They start to follow me. They don't message me right away, by the way. It's, it's usually like this, no joke. This is the kind of message I get is like, hey, um, we're considering, considering relocating to Raleigh. We'll be there in about, um, you know, three weeks to kind of um, look 
at everything and see if it's an area we want to move to. But I've been following you for a while and I really like your vibe. I want you to be our realtor. Are you able to take on a new client? Like I get messages like that, you guys, every single week. And it's all because I'm just being who I am and sharing my life with people. And there's so much value in that because they see you as an expert. They don't even care like that. I've just moved here, not a full two years ago yet, because I'm sharing enough content that makes me look like I know everything about my area. I'm the one that they want to work with. So that's, what's cool. Just get up in your stories and do the dang videos. Does anyone have any questions? Cause I know this is a hot topic right now. Jamie, can I chime in really quick? Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, my name is Ashley. I'm actually the one who posted the like, uh, I need help uh, post in Modern Agent. Yeah. That kind of got all this. So I first I wanted to say thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. I'm a military spouse and relocation is not my choice. It's just <laughs> congratulations. This is where you, you're going. Hey, that was that was me too, Ashley. I came from oh. a military base in Lemoore, California. It was mostly PCS moves. And so I just kind of put that knowledge into place when I relocated here. So you're the yes, perfect person exactly to be doing this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to go back uh, to talking about Instagram and the branding and putting your face out. Um, yep. Last month, I decided, you know, we got here. I wiped my Instagram clean and decided I'm just doing one Instagram for personal and work and all the things. And so over the last month, I've really got to pay attention to what's popular and what's not. I feel like that's hard to do once you've been doing it for a while. Right. Um, and hands down photos of me. It doesn't even matter if the photo of me has nothing to do with what I'm talking about in the post. Exactly. It's triple the engagement of, of the stock photos of modern agent. Now I love right. modern agent and I love beautiful. But it is insane to me, the difference in engagement between just me being my authentic self or a photo of me versus a photo of something really pretty, even if it applies better to what I'm talking about. Exactly. Exactly. And you just then, proved everything I said 100%. Yes, exactly. And then, so I started following you recently and I also started following um, the Valley Realtor, who's also a modern agent. Her name's Kristen Peabody. Yeah, Kristen's my buddy. Yeah. And she is, you both are just so good about it. And one of the things that I like that she does in particular, um, she takes the modern agent stuff and just uses Canva's cutout feature to put herself on yep. every single one of those. Branding for, herself. Yeah. And for people like me who just get so like anxious in front of the camera, um, that I felt like that was just such an easy, brilliant way to brand herself and not have to think about it as much. Exactly. And so just a, a tip for those of us who are struggling, like if all you can do is that in the beginning, you're still putting your face in front of people and you're still getting better engagement exactly. than if you were just posting that, that branded content by itself. And you know what's crazy, Ashley? She's only been a realtor for a year. She just closed out her <laughs> first year of real estate. Real estate. I, that is 100% the reason why I started following her. Because I knew she was brand new and she was killing it. Killing it. I was like, I'm going to learn it because I'm starting all over. You know, basically. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Are you on your phone and on? I'm not. Um, but I'm also getting uh, feedback on your end. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Is Hold it, on a is second. it still happening? Yeah, maybe somebody yeah. else is on a cell phone and on Zoom. There is somebody with the, that is not unmuted, so that's why. It's yeah. Annoying. Can you guys all mute your mics real quick? Let's see if it goes away. Can you guys hear me okay now? You're still echoing. I'm still echoing. Yeah. How about now? Am I good now? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, because that was, that's exactly everything I said. You totally 100% proved my point that it really does matter. They want to see your face. They don't want to see a stock photo. So even if you're just cutting yourself out and putting it on top of your content, like that's better than nothing, but do the videos, <laughs> get in your stories. Cause they can't figure out who you are until you do the stories. I mean, I'm dead serious. Um, 
that's the biggest thing. And I get messages like that all the time on my Instagram. I don't know so many of you do too. So just make sure you keep doing that. All right, I'm going to move on. Um, this is another thing that I think is huge. And so many of us get a website from our brokerage, which is great. That has the IDX feed already in there. But I'm here to tell you, we cannot compete with Zillow. We cannot compete with Realtor.com, Redfin, all of those third-party websites where they're already searching for properties. They, they don't care about our website. I'm sorry, they don't care about searching for properties on our website. So for me, and I've been using this branded website since seven, eight years ago now, um, I've never once had IDX on my website and I still get leads from my website. So I say all this to say, like, make sure you have your own personalized branded website to you separate from your brokerage. That way, if you switch brokerages, it doesn't matter. You, I take this with me everywhere I go and I can update it as I need to, but really it's just about me. It's not about my brokerage. So I know there are state um, rules and regulations that you have to have maybe your logo, the, um, your business license and your um, broker's license on your website, that could be at the very bottom, but just figure out what that means in your state. But really, honestly, make sure you have your own branded website because when people Google you, I promise you they're looking at your Facebook, they're looking at your Instagram, and they're looking to see if you have your own branded website to see if it's professional or whatever. And that's the biggest thing is um, they want to get to know more about you. And so this is something that I'm going to be doing <clears throat> and moving into 2021, <clears throat> excuse me, is I'm going to add a welcome video right here at the top. I have a date scheduled with my videographer and I'm going to also use that as like my promo um, video on my YouTube, but make sure you add a welcome video so they can get to know a little bit about who you are. And you know, you, you guys have seen them. Those, they're like those sexy little videos of like who you are as a realtor and like behind the scenes type stuff. Even if it's just something of you just sitting down like, Hey, welcome to my page. Like, Whatever it is, just make sure you have something right here up at the top because that's going to get a lot of traction and people will watch it. And then add in some YouTube videos. You can add up at the top like a little link of like more branded videos or whatever you want to call it. Videos about you being the relocation expert. So that's the biggest thing. Um, I think, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on here at the end, but YouTube, so many of us are doing YouTube videos wrong. We're doing the um, first time home buyer YouTube videos and stuff like that. People watch them, but you're not going to get a ton of business from it. Where you're going to get a ton of business from is relocation type of videos like California versus North Carolina, what you need to know, or top 10 things I love about Raleigh or um, cost of living of California, like whatever part of California compared to Raleigh, North Carolina. Those type of relocation videos are going to get way more traction and you're going to get free YouTube leads when you're doing those types of videos. So do the videos and put those videos in a, a certain link right here on your website so that you have those branded videos right on your website. And then the other thing, um, make sure you link your website to Google location. It's free to do. You can set that up right in Google. You don't have to, they changed it. So this is really cool. They changed it. I don't know if it was last year or the year before that, they changed it to no longer needing to have a physical location to be on Google. You can just say that, oh, I'm in Holly Springs, North Carolina. I don't have to have a location anymore but you can also uh, make sure that it's searchable so that when people are looking for realtor in Holly Springs, my information is gonna come up and then it's linked to my website. So that's another thing. They're gonna um, do their research by Googling. They're gonna look for a realtor that way sometimes and then they're gonna fall on your branded website. But the other thing, um, I built my website through Squarespace. I did a video on this before on how to build out your entire website. Um, but I also use the scheduling app through Squarespace. So it's an add on feature. So many of you that have done one on one calls with me, I send this link to you and have you um, book your own call with me. And what it does is it, it's just like Calendly where it'll link to my um, phone and it'll tell me like, you know, it'll block out certain times. If I'm already busy or I have an appointment, it'll block that time out. So when they go to pick a date and time, it'll only show the times that I'm available and they can schedule that call with me right there. And so anytime I get like an Instagram lead or a Facebook lead or any online lead source, I'm always asking them to schedule right on there. I'll send that link to them. Uh, and for two reasons, I want them to look on my website and find out more information about me. And I want to just further prove my value. 
but then too, you know, obviously the scheduling part of it, but it's really cool because it, it um, helps with the organic traffic to my website. The more people that are landing on it from different areas, the algorithm, it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, so make sure you, if you're gonna be using a scheduling link, I highly recommend using Squarespace and Squarespace's um, scheduling link right in there because in that way you send out that link and say, oh, I'd love to help you. I'd love to be your realtor. Pick a time that works best for you. Um, this is directly linked to my calendar. So any available time I'm available will pop up in there. And then I, I kid you not, all the time I hear people say, oh, thank you so much for sending that scheduling link. Um, I, I kind of piddled around on your website a little bit and I really love your story. It sounds very similar to ours. And I, I really feel like we have the right realtor for us. So it's more, again, like I said, it's branding myself and just further proving my value as their relocation expert. So, and then lastly, you can also, um, through Squarespace, you can have your blog right in your website. Now don't go look at my blog, it's pretty terrible, <laughs> but that is a goal for 2021 is just to continue putting more info on that blog and putting more relocation information on that blog, like top 10 favorite coffee shops in Raleigh, things like that. Stuff that when they Google it, they might organically be able to find my website and land on my blog, which lands to my website and then they can schedule a call with me. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about this? All right, cool, moving on. Um, this is something that I dove into when I first got here. I haven't ever really revisited it because this again was the, those first six months when I wasn't really selling real estate. I just wanted to get to know my area. But street text, it basically helps you get in front of consumers on Facebook to offer them a free home valuation. And it creates a landing page, which that landing page then goes to your portal and you'll get their um, address, you'll get their email, their name, their phone number, if they fill it all out. And it's a great way to get leads and people who are looking at selling their house. I will say it's all in the follow-up. It can be a little bit costly up front. So if you don't have the money to invest in it, this might not be the right fit for you. Um, but if you're looking at getting more seller leads this year, even if you're not relocating, this might be a good um, tool and resource for you to get more leads and get in front of more people. And they offer a seven day free trial. So it's worth looking into, especially right now, since there's not that many um, houses on the market and home values are going up. People are kind of considering like, how much is my house worth? Is it worth it to sell? And so I did notice that um, when it's those times, this does really, really well and you can get some leads that way. So consider looking into that. Um, they do have like a also Facebook group that you can be a part of, and then you can sign up to do like a seven week free trial or seven day, sorry, not seven week, one week, seven day free trial. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee yet this morning, you guys. It's It's been a day, like my husband's trucks in the shop. We had to go drop that off. Then I went to go pick up my rental car at Enterprise and they freaking were like, oh, um, sorry, we don't have it. We're going to have to call this other place. Anyways, long story short, it's been a morning already. <laughs> All right, moving on. That's street text. And then here's just some other tidbits that I can um, provide to you guys. Just, just know that like you need to become a pillar in your community quickly. And the best way you can do that is just networking, going to the chamber events, finding local network, um, network things in your community, even if that's on zoom because they are happening, Chamber of Commerce, all that good stuff. But another thing that I did this year just to become a pillar in my community is I hosted COVID friendly um, neighborhood events all throughout the year. So I don't know if you guys remember, but back during, um, right after the whole thing happened back in March when everyone was had the uh, stay at home orders, through Easter, I did a virtual Easter egg coloring contest for my neighborhood. Um, in the summer, I did like a summer slam at the pond where everyone social distanced and got their um, chairs out and sat down and had a neighborhood band come play. I, I had an ice cream truck come out and provide ice cream. And so it was all like super cool. People who were interested in coming and felt safe being able to do that came. We did a monster mash dash fun run. It was like a 50 yard dash for the kids during Halloween and they wore their Halloween costumes. And we did a one mile fun run during that too. So it was super fun. We had a DJ, we had food trucks out there and it's just all about organizing it. Do you have to pay for all of it yourself? No, just get linked up with like a local um, lender, get linked up with like a local title company or closing attorney and get linked up with um, homeowners insurance company and ask them if they are willing to 
split the cost and co-brand these events with you together, they're not going to say no. And so um, that kind of helped me just becoming a familiar face in my big, huge master plan community. There's probably, I'm not even exaggerating when I say this, like at least 50 realtors in my neighborhood alone. But guess who was the number one selling realtor in my neighborhood this year? This girl. And it's all from doing these hosted neighborhood events and helping relocation clients move to my neighborhood um, and getting listings in my neighborhood from people just saying like, oh my gosh, she's so nice. And here's the thing. I do these things for two reasons. Like I love loving on people. It's just like a natural gift I have. I want to be able to um, plan fun things for my neighborhood, even through COVID that was COVID safe. But also like it just helps me get to know more of my neighbors and it's helping me further brand myself. Um, and my, my whole forefront on my focus wasn't like, oh, I'm doing this to get more business. No, I'm honestly doing this because I love doing it and I want to meet more neighbors and I want to provide a fun, safe thing for the neighborhood to do. So that's why we continue to do these things. And um, I just highly, highly, highly suggest doing that because it's just going to help you build your name and your brand a lot faster. Um, be consistent on social media every single day. I've already said this, provide good content. Well, what does good content look like? I don't know. It depends on you. What are you into and who's your ideal client? Gone are the days of having like super tough friction in my deals. Now it's just like, you know, they're smooth as butter because it's people who are just like me. They trust me with their entire lives, relocating from out of state. And it's it's just so much easier dealing with people who want to work with me, if that makes sense. Um, and then also on social media, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, whatever platforms you're using, YouTube, show them how they would live their life. They're obviously following you. They want to see how would their life look like if they lived there? Where would they go to go to the movies? Where would they go to eat? Where would they go to do this? Now, granted, I understand it's a little bit harder with COVID going on, but there's still some things that we can do here in our community. We're not as locked down as, let's say, where I came from, California, where they, even restaurants are closed right now. Um, but just put content out there that is going to attract your most ideal client. Be the person that they're searching for. Provide so much value that you are who they want to work with. No questions asked. I think that's the biggest thing is people are like, how are you doing this? I'm like, I'm just being myself. I'm showing them how they would live their life and providing so much value to them. Um, what happens is when I hop on the Zoom calls with them. So let's say I'm going to walk you through this funnel real quick on how I do this. So let's say they um, reach out to me and they're like, hey, um, we re we're relocating to Raleigh. We want you to be our realtor. Awesome. I'd love to help you. Let's hop on a Zoom call so we can um, get to know each other a little bit better. I want to hear all the things. I want to hear about what's bringing you to Raleigh, what your timeline's like, what you do for a living, and what your hobbies are. Because I really want to get um, focused on showing you parts of the triangle that matter to you and how you would live your life. Because for me, like, let me use this prime example. If they are dairy free, why would I go and show them my favorite ice cream shop if they're not even eating ice cream, right? So like when I hop on those Zoom calls with them, I tell them like right away before I even dive into what it looks like to move here, tell me about you. I want to know how you live your life. What's bringing you to Raleigh? What's your timeline? What do you do for a living? Do you have any children? Do you have any dogs? How do you spend your free time? And that's the very last question I remind them. Please tell me how do you spend your free time? What kind of hobbies do you like to partake in? Or how do you see yourself living here in Raleigh? Are you moving here because you want to go on more hikes? What is um, prompting you to move here? And how would you like to live your life here? And then based on how they answer me, I'm like, perfect. Before we start talking about um, more of what your needs and wants are in a home, I want to dive in and do a screen share real quick. And what I do is I um, share Google Maps and I'm like, okay, Based on where your where your work is going to be located, this is probably a good area to maybe consider moving to because your commute is going to be about 20 minutes. And since you told me you don't want to commute more than 20 minutes, we probably really need to stay within these areas. Based on these areas, um, this is where the ice cream shop is. Since you said your kids are obsessed with ice cream, this is where the local dog park is. This is where you would go and work out because there's like three gyms right around this neighborhood. So I'm really tailoring that call based on their likes, based on their hobbies, based on their lifestyle. No two calls are the same. And I'm here to tell you, I have yet to lose a buyer after I do this because I'm building rapport, right? I am finding out what they like to do in their free time 
and showing them how it, how that would correlate to uh, moving here and what Raleigh has to offer. Oh, you love going on paddle boards? Great. There's like three local lakes that you can go to within 15 minutes that you can take your paddle board out there and do whatever you want to do. So I think there's so much value in that too. So it's like obviously a sales funnel, right? It's like providing content of value in your newsfeed, showing up on your stories and making them finally reach out, creating those engagement stickers on your videos on um, Instagram, and then hopping on that Zoom call to further prove your value and show them why you are the area expert and what they can expect to see or do when they move here. I think that is a, that's kind of like the cherry on top. And I can guarantee you nine out of 10 realtors are not doing that. Um, every single one of my clients always tells me that the, the the biggest thing that helped them feel a little bit more at ease and they felt like with so much value was that Zoom call. Because again, I tailor it to what they want to hear and what they want to look at. Do you guys have any questions for me on this? All right, pretty straightforward. And then lastly, so many of you have asked questions about what my relocation page looks like. Um, I So before you go and just start a page, really consider what is, who are you trying to reach? Are you trying to reach anybody and any, every single person that's relocating to your area? Or are you gonna try to create a niche market like I have um, I think I told you guys, I closed a million dollar sale on Friday and she found me from my California to North Carolina page. And um, the biggest value added here is again, just showing them how they live their life. And the way I got this started was I was like, look, there's already a relocation page to Raleigh, but go on uhaul.com and you can look and see every single year based on their stats where people are moving out of and where they are moving to. Okay, that's my biggest piece of advice for you because you'll see like the top 10 areas that people are moving to. So what it does is they list it from the states from one to 50 and the number one state is the, the um, place that people are moving to the most. And I think this last year it was Texas or something like that. Uh, North Carolina was I think in the top 10. So it was like number eight or something like that. So I was like, okay, obviously North Carolina is a huge relocation state. So I don't wanna be so specific and just say relocating to Raleigh. I wanna capture people who are also considering moving to Charlotte, Asheville and to the coast. And that way, if nothing else, it becomes a referral, right? So that was number one. That's the first thing, my first thought in creating this. Number two, um, if you go, well, obviously I had a lot to say about this because I'm from California. So I felt like, okay, there's some common ground there. Um, I just went through this relocation move. And if you go to uhaul.com, California is the 50th state on their uh, list for 2020. So there's a huge mass exodus of people moving out of California and into states like Tennessee, Texas, North Carolina, and I think Florida. Um, so if you're in any of those states and you're trying to focus on relocation buyers or you're going to be relocating to those areas, get your page up and running now. Snag that name. Um, that's why I put California to North Carolina. And then you can also have your business page be an admin of that page so they see that you are a realtor. Now, I also have up at the top of the page videos and stuff like that. And I have like a, a call to action, like, hey, if you're looking at relocating, DM me, let's start the process. I'm happy to help you. I went through the relocation process. So I know what the pitfalls are, what to look out for and how to go through this successfully. Um, and so I've had a few people reach out to me when I first got this page up and running. The way I did it is there's this huge page called Networking Women of the Triangle. That's where I live, the Triangle. So it's Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. And I put on there, hey, is anyone in this group from California? And like all the comments started flowing in. And I was like, awesome, I just started a page. It's called California to North Carolina. I'd love for you to join it so we can just link arms and like discuss what we miss about California versus what we love in North Carolina, right? And so I did that just so I could start to have people in my group that have some common ground. And originally it just started out like, oh, I really miss California tacos. And it was like all centered around food. But then before you know it, people are asking like, hey, 
Um, I'm considering moving to North Carolina from California. What neighborhoods should I consider when they join the group? But um, this has been a huge, huge resource for me in having this group because we have so much common ground that when they join the group, I'm having them ask questions. So some of the questions I'm having them um, answer is, are you originally from California? Are you considering relocating to North Carolina? And if so, what areas are you considering relocating to? And then I also ask like, what's your timeline for moving? And I just have them answer those three questions before they can even get into the group. And then in that way, I can look and see like, okay, they're originally from California. Yes, they want to move to North Carolina. They're considering Raleigh and their time frame is three months. So then what I do is I invite them to, I um, accept their invite. And then what I do from there is I, create a comment on our post and, and tag all the people who I just added to the group and say, hey, please welcome, you know, and then tag them their name in that comment. Uh, welcome them to the group. Uh, a lot of them are considering moving to North Carolina. Would you guys comment below that are already here in North Carolina? What's your favorite thing about North Carolina and or what do you miss about California? And I do this every single time I add at least, you know, 10 people to the group. Um, and that kind of helps get the conversation started. But then I also, at the very bottom of that comment, I say, each and every one of you that are new to this group, please check your private messages. I just sent you a message. Um, otherwise, they're not going to see my message. It's going to go to the other inbox. And I, I just do the same comment every single time. Hey, thanks for joining our group. I'm originally from California. I relocated to North Carolina almost two years ago. I'm a local realtor. I'd love to be a resource to you. Um, I saw that you're considering moving here in the next six months. Tell me more about that. Do you already have jobs here? Or are you just trying to get out of California? What's your scoop? And then just start the DMs from there. Eventually, I always invite them to a Zoom call, hop them on Zoom call and go through that same process with them like I do an Instagram lead. So that's how I'm able to successfully get leads to closing is just going through that same process every single time. But you'll wanna make sure that you're creating a niche Facebook page it can't just be like Tennessee or something like that. You'll want to make it like relocating to Tennessee or from California to North Carolina, whatever it is, because that's you're going to find that um, as you niche down, it's going to be a lot easier to create um, that rapport with them because you have so much more in common or whatever it is. And before you guys ask, as much as I would love to have you in the group, I'm not going to invite you or add you to the group. And it's not because I don't love y'all because I really do, but it's because I don't want to mess up my algorithm. Facebook has a way of putting this in front of people who they think want to relocate here. Cause I've asked so many people like, Oh, how'd you find my group? And they can't tell me. They're just like, I don't know. Like somehow it showed up in my um, Facebook feed saying like, Oh, would you like to join this group? And I hit join. And so what I'm gathering after going through this process is it just has a way of like, now that my group has been built up to almost 390 members, it now has a way of just kind of figuring out people like what they're searching, if they're searching a lot of stuff about North Carolina, getting out of uh, California, whatever, and then coming back to Facebook, it's then suggesting my page to them based on that. Now, if I had a bunch of realtors in here, it's going to kill my algorithm and it's just going to be like, what the heck's going on? So if you're trying to get into the group, I'm sorry, I'm telling you right now, I'm not gonna let you in. <laughs> but if you wanna know everything that I've done, like I literally just told you, again, I just put more like info and content and value on there for them. Videos, the same thing that I would, but keep it super niche down. So if it's for example, California, North Carolina, I would do a video on like my favorite taco trucks around here. Um, I've done that. I've done a video on like where I can go to get recipes to make tamales. I've done a video on that. So it's like just proving further providing content of value to them. So they're like, oh, okay, that's something that I would totally think of because in California, everyone has tamales, but do they have tamales in North Carolina? Like these are the things that people are thinking of. So you just need to get in the brain of the people who you're trying to reach and think like them and put out content that will speak to them. So that's that's pretty much how I did this group. Um, and then create a YouTube channel focusing on relocation content. Again, it would be like, top 10 things I love about Raleigh or, you know, all that good stuff. Um, it, it's just really cool to see everything that I did over this last year really working. 
but now I really want to further dive into my YouTube as another source. Um, if you guys are like me and you're, you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will say just Google YouTube agents, um, Jesse Dow and Jackson Wilkie. They have a YouTube um, channel that teaches you basically how to set up your YouTube channel and what videos to do, what equipment to use, um, how to use TubeBuddy to like, because now people are using um, Google and they're searching it and YouTube videos are coming up because Google owns YouTube. So now it's no longer the videos of like first steps for home buyers. It's not stuff like that. It's more hyper local and focusing on people that want to relocate here because they want to see you as the expert. They, they're basically wanting to get in touch with somebody who they think knows the most about their area and you're going to start to get free YouTube leads, but yeah, look them up and look up Karen Carr. They talk about how to set up your YouTube channel to get um, relocation buyers. I think that's it. Is that my last slide? I think it is. Yep, that's it. I think I have a few last tips that I wanted to um, share with you guys. And I'm going to say this. Um, I know so many of you have no idea where to start, and that's okay. But just start. There's two types of people in this world. There's people who just say, you know what, I'm just going to jump all in and I'll figure it out. That's me. I just naturally, I'm like a figure outer. Is that a word? <laughs> figure outer. -er. <laughs> I like to figure things out and I'm not afraid of failing because when you fail and you continue to fail, then you're like, okay, that's not the right way. Well, maybe this is, maybe this is. Um, just, get, just try, even if it's not your natural tendency to be a figure outer, -er, <laughs> just try to figure things out because there's, like I said, two types of people in the world, people who figure it out and people who become paralyzed because they don't know how to figure it out. Now, here's a prime example. Um, I started making my children smoothies about a couple weeks ago. I give them smoothies in the morning and I was super slammed this morning. And I asked my husband, hey, can you help me? Like, I really need you to help, help me by making them a smoothie. And he's like, uh, I don't know how. And I was like, you don't know how. You've literally watched me do this every single day for two weeks. You watch me put in all the ingredients. You watch how much I'm doing. Like you're literally watching me do this, right? I'm, I'm going to get to the end of the story here in a second. Cause so many of you probably can relate to this crap. It's not even funny. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Right. And I was like, I got really morbid on him. And you know, here I am playing like the negative Nancy here. And I'm like, all right, all right. I'm going to play devil's advocate with you right now. If I were to die right here, right now, and the kids wanted a freaking smoothie tomorrow morning for breakfast, what would you do? I don't know. I'd figure it out. Mic drop. Did you hear what he said to me? He said, oh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. So there's two types of people in this world. The people who figure it out and the people who get paralyzed because they don't want to try to figure it out. Be the type of person who's going to figure it out. Don't let anything get in the way of your success. Because at the end of the day, the only one responsible for your success is you. Figure it out. That's all I have for you guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the mics. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. Hi. I have a question. Can you all can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good. So I'm like you. I'm going to figure it out. I'm fine with, you know, making mistakes. I'm kind of in the... If I could plan, I would plan to relocate by this summer. I've been stalking. I think I know my stalking in a you know good way, networking with other realtors and things. And I think I know the brokerage that I want to hit up. How early is too early to like really get started? Like I'm taking my licensing classes now because I don't have reciprocity with Pennsylvania and Florida. Um, I'm doing as much as I can, but like when really should I reach out and be like, hey, let me find out about your company. Should we do a Zoom interview now? And when yeah. should I really talk to my current brokerage if you have any experience with that oh so I talked to my current broker as soon as I was like hey I'm going to be relocating I told him like as okay. soon as soon as I was like hey these are my plans I'm keeping it hush hush but I want to keep you in the loop now so that you know like I'm going to be coming back and forth a lot and I want you to know yeah. that I'm relocating and these are my plans so I told him okay. right away it was like a year ahead of time um okay so that's, that's that good. and then the other thing is 
so I'm going to keep it real, real with you guys right now. A couple of you hopped on this call because you wanted to hear also about EXP Realty. I went way over time. Um, I have another call at 2.30. So what I'm going to do, if any of you care to hear about EXP Realty, I'm going to set up another call. There's about four or five of you on this call that I know for sure that we're considering and wanted to hear more about it. I might have to set up a separate call for that. Um, but I'll tell you this much. And I'm going to try to... Uh, I'm gonna to try to just be as sincere as possible when I say this. My biggest regret in not joining EXP before I left California is just that. And the reason why, there's so many different reasons, but for me, it was about being able to not have to dissolve my team. Like if I hadn't joined EXP before I left California, I wouldn't have had to dissolve my team. And I would be making six figures there and six figures here. Like mm -hmm. no brainer you know? Um, but I dissolved my team because I didn't know how else I was going to be able to still keep my business running in California and relocate to North Carolina without having something going there. But what's cool is EXP is one brokerage. I know there's a few EXP agents on this call right now. We're one brokerage across the country. So no matter if you sell in your old state, your new state, any state in between, it goes towards your caps. So you have one cap. It's an 80-20 split. So I make 80%. My broker takes 20 that 20% goes to the brokerage. After I pay $16,000 to the brokerage, I cap for the entire rest of my calendar year. So it didn't matter if I sold in California or here, I could have been capped, which is amazing. Furthermore, you get stock, you earn stock as you sell. You're being awarded actual real stock dollars for my retirement, for my kids' future and my kids' kids' future. Like that's pretty empowering to me. To be able to finally say that I'm building generational wealth is cool. And then third, they have revenue share. Um, so those of you that are even considering making that move, my biggest piece of advice and my biggest regret was not joining EXP before I relocated. Because I, like I said, I could still have my team going. Mm -hmm. um, Did you just get but, up? No. Oh. But to answer your question, um, when do you really start to dive into that? Do you have a test date for your new state that you're moving to yet? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I always say, I, I didn't start um, interviewing like brokerages until I had my actual license in hand. And I was like, all right, I'm going to start mm -hmm. talking to them and figuring out where I'm going to hang my license and just being up front and saying like, Hey, like I'm relocating to Raleigh. I'm not there physically yet. I just need a place to hang this license since I have it. I probably won't be selling anything until I actually moved there. And so for me, I got my license here October of 2018. I didn't actually move here until June of 2019. So I hung it with a small boutique brokerage and he let me hang it there. He didn't care. Um, and I hung it there just so I had it. And um, I hung it with him until, well, basically a whole full year. And then I moved over in January. <laughs> yeah. So that's my thing. I, I wouldn't even start until you have that license in hand and then start to interview with people. And, um, but honestly, like I really regret having even gone to that local boutique brokerage. I think that mm. it really hindered my growth. I thought it was going to be what I wanted and it absolutely was not at all. Um, it was one of those 90, 10 split companies that had no additional value. And he was hardly ever available. They did once a w once a month calls, not even weekly. And I was like, this is so weird. This is not for me. I just didn't have the collaboration that I wanted, if that makes sense. I didn't have the support. I didn't have somebody there that was like, um, here's, here's a list of vendors. Like I had to figure it out, which is fine. I just gave you all the tips on what I did to help figure it out and get uh, re resources and a vendor list together. But I really think, I really think that had I um, moved to EXP before I actually did, my one my bank account would look so much different but two I don't think I would have struggled as much getting connected to people I needed to get connected to if that makes sense interesting thanks yeah does anyone else have a question for me somebody says hey Jamie thanks so much for everything I'm going to hop off the call EXP is the best mo business move I've made as well yep Katie, I met Jamie through EXP Realty and even knowing her has made me a better, a oh, better for business. Gotta hop off. Thank you for this call. Thanks, Katie. You're awesome. I'm going to just go Hi, through Jamie, these comments. I yeah, what's up? I Lizzie? have a quick question. 
Ah, uh, let me put the camera really quick. Okay. Hi. Um, Hi. I love your page and I have been following for a while. Uh, I live in North Carolina, but in Charlotte. And I have a quick question for you. Yeah. I have, I struggle with following up with the leads. Like I get uh, leads all the time, but I don't keep, I'm not on top of them. Like, how do you manage, you know, because uh, being a high performer, family, following up with the leads and doing all this stuff. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, she's yeah. having a little just, meltdown. Just like you said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, see, we do it all. We juggle, you guys. We've gotta do what we gotta do. Um, so the biggest thing I'll say is make sure you have a CRM and plug everything into that CRM. If you don't have a CRM, just use a Google spreadsheet, use Excel, use something, and then you'll just want to put like their name, how they reached out to you so you know what source it came from, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, the date they reached out to you, um, if you've scheduled a call, what day the call is scheduled for, and then any other details and notes from there because next to those notes then you can write like, oh, they plan to move to um, Charlotte in six months and put a date then that way you can have at that point have a drip campaign or be able to follow up with them consistently from there I think that's also the biggest thing is follow up but also when you keep putting out more content they're not going to fall off your page they the, like I've worked with so many people that first reached out to me this time last year that I just closed in December so that's almost 12 months of them following me and they stuck with me I haven't oh, okay. lost one yet um I Perfect. think that when you just keep putting out really good content, they appreciate that and they're going to come back when the time is right. But I also say like, if they sit there and they say, oh, we're going to, we're going to relocate in like six months and you hop on a Zoom call, find out like, hey, do you have plans to come out to Raleigh or to Charlotte in the next few months? If so, I'd love to, um, what I do is I love to drive them around. They're in their car. I'm in my car. I put it on speakerphone. And I drive around and I'm like, there's the pediatrician for your kids. Like there's the ice cream shop. There's the soccer field. And I show them everything in the town that they're considering relocating to. Cause I'll tell you what, when you just drive around, you're not going to find that stuff. Right. For me, I find like when I do that with them, once they're finally here, if they come here, cause I've sold some virtually completely, they find so much value in that. Like, oh my gosh, she took the time to show us where everything is. They're going to come back to you. Because you're proving your value all the way along through the process that just make sure once they're here, follow up with them the next week. Like, hey, how was your trip out here in, in Charlotte? Like, did you love it? Is there anything else I can do to help you? And um, is your timeline still pretty firm? I just want to make sure that you know I'm here for you if you need anything. And then at that point, they'll tell okay. you like, oh, yeah, um, our timeline still looks the same whatever blah 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 blah. and then I'm like okay perfect is it okay if I follow up with you next month just to make sure everything's the same you want to make sure you follow up with them at least once a month with these relocation buyers because sometimes things switch like so fast that you don't even realize mm -hmm. like oh we had we planned that we were going to move there in 12 months but because of COVID it actually got pushed up and now we're moving in two months that that happened to me a lot this year so don't always the age-old saying buyers are liars don't always take what they're saying to be 100% truth because plans can change, timeline can change. Just make sure that you have them um, kind of in, in that spreadsheet that you have all that information so you remember where they came from. And then that way you can always look back on old messages and remember like what you guys were talking about when you were in those DMs because that's where it happens. Does that, did I answer your question? Awesome, awesome. No, that's a good advice. Okay, yes, cool. and quick question about people relocating, about yes. financing. They, they yes. always put 20% down, 10% down? No, not down. always. Was um, so the thing is, if they have already have a job lined up here, um, a, lot, a lot of people that I'm working with because they're coming from California and buying here, where it's cheaper in North Carolina compared to California, and lots of states from like New York and New Jersey, they have equity in their homes. A lot of them are putting 20% down. Um, sometimes I'm dealing with people who want to rent first and I help them find a rental. It just, it all depends. So I just treat them like any buyer. Um, you never know. Some people who look just super humble end up having a $2 million house. Like that's literally what happened with these, these clients of mine that closed on Friday. 
they had a super humble like 1600 square foot house in the bay area they sold it for over two million and bought a house here cash for a million dollars so you never know who you're dealing with treat every person the same oh my treat God, them, that's a... i know it's crazy like i could have never guessed that you know what i mean um treat them like like you would anybody you never know somebody's history maybe they have a ton of money or a ton of equity in their house you just never know but when I get off that Zoom call with them, I'm immediately getting them in touch with my lender. And make sure that they know they have to have a job lined up because North Carolina specifically, our underwriters here suck. They are so difficult because they yes. know so many people are relocating here that it makes it very hard. They have to have their job lined up before they actually get here in order for them to buy. Otherwise the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Yep, awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, you're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? All right, well, I have to hop off here. I have a team call. Um, if any of you are interested in hopping on a private EXP call with me, drop a comment privately to me in the chat box and I will make sure I follow up with you. Otherwise, I'm so glad to provide so much value to you guys. I hope that was um, helpful and you guys have a great day. Amy, real quick before you hop off, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you a million times. Half of this was stuff that I knew and just needed to hear and be told like, yeah, that's it. There's no secret sauce. Just keep doing it. Yep. And half of it was kind of mind blowing. I do think you have a couple secret squirrel tips that those <laughs> thank were you. incredible. So don't sell yourself short there. <laughs> Um, but I know you got to go. I just really wanted to say thank you and let you know from You're the welcome. bottom of my heart how much I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Reach out if you have any questions. I will. Thank you. Bye. Bye.